Downtown between Brush Street and I-375. That's where we're located in the heart of Detroit at Ford Field, which first opened back in 2002. Both teams emerging from the Ford Field tunnels just a short time ago. And, of course, the loudest cheers were reserved for the hometown Lions. They're set to go as they will match up with the San Francisco 49ers. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. They'll run for the first time with Tevin Coleman. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And he's going to have a Niners first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. On first down, they go with Mostert again. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Mostert, the, ball the linebacker, Christian Jones, there to make the stop. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. On second down, Mostert. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield stripe. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Defense had a chance to get off the field here on the opening drive, couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches, and sometimes maybe we can get, you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? Offense and defense. In this case, one capitalized, and the other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that you can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. Completes it to Samuel. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Garoppolo able to find Samuel there for a Niners first down. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them, and now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone, because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. And yeah, they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. A good pickup there, 26 yards. Well, that certainly has to feel good. And it's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am. 
them. And you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action, maybe throwing it. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. It's Coleman here. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Call it a gain of a couple. The defense stiffening here. It's third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? They'll run with Mostert. And across the goal line, into the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers. Raheem Mostert taking it in. And the 49ers drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. Robbie Gold on for the extra point. And the 49ers grab a 7 to nothing lead. Makes the score Niners 7, Lions nothing. Wishnowski. Here is Wishnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. Jamal Agnew now to return it. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at their own 26. He fakes the give here and looks to throw. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They run out of the gun with Swift. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. Two yards on the first down carry, and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. Throwing on third down, Stafford. He's going to get that to Swift underneath. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Call it a pickup of three and also now likely a punt on their opening drive. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. This is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. Garoppolo now, first down throw. His throw incomplete. Debo 
Samuel was the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but they make them out of bounds. That does you no good. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. A little too aggressive defensively, and the flag comes out. And no one trying to cover is going to like a call going against them, but you have to like the effort there. Went for the interception, just unable to get it, and the flag did come out. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Garoppolo going to give to Mostert. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll bring up a second and 13. Now Moster. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain there, and now they're looking at a third and 13. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. The Niners on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is going to be third and 13. And that is incomplete. Had to pass there. Third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. Jamal Agnew is deep to return it. Going to be a 39-yard punt, no return, and the Lions will take over. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. Don't want to get behind the sticks because... Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Pass rusher extraordinaire D Ford that time getting the sack. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Another try after the first down sack. Stafford over the middle. It's Amendola. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defender's grab as well. Passing game not in sync here early, and now it's fourth down. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they have to give up the football again after this one. Here's Jack Fox now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. A big play there on the catch and run. 59 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. Well, that didn't take long. One play, and we're already looking at a first and goal situation. 
A play fake from Mostert. Now Garoppolo. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Run it well and it's picked. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The Lions take over first and 10 at their own 20 yard. After the interception, here's Stafford. That's complete to DeAndre Swift out of the backfield. And he'll have a pass midfield almost to the 30 before being taken down. 39 yards, the distance covered on the catch and run. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And the Niners get there and bring him down. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Another try after the first down sack. Stafford. Danny Amendola, the man he was trying to get it to. And it's third down. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. They haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, here's Stafford. And that is incomplete. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. Here comes the Lions punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play <laughs> guy a question. Hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. And in enemy territory last time through the interception. We'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play, so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try and take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now a play fake. Garoppolo. And he fires one that's intercepted. It's Desmond Trufay. 30 seconds remain in this first half as they come up here first and 10. The Lions take over first and ten. Out of the gun, Stafford. That's complete to Swift out of the backfield. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He was unable to shake free there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. At the 24-yard line. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, it's the 49ers out in front, and they will get the football first as well as we are back and started in the second half. The Lions 
Vikings offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. And Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. And they start the second half with Johnson. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. It's a decent game. Call for not in the call. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. Only people celebrating? The guys who just gave up that play. Stafford with a play fake to Swift, and he'll set to throw. They'll find Swift out of the backfield. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. Three yards the game there, second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. On second down, Johnson is shoving his way inside the 35. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A gain there of 21 yards. Thought they were going to have him down a lot earlier, but he was able to shed that tackle. Shows the value of the weight room, doesn't it? Shows the value of the attitude when you run the football. Don't go down easily. Break a few tackles. Gain some additional yardage. On first and 10, Stafford. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. And a well pass midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 17 yards on the catch and run, it's a first down. I don't know what they talked about at halftime, whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. Here's a quick throw complete to Galladay. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and 10. From the gun, Stafford. Be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on. Third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. On third down, Stafford. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And a good job on the tackle there as they get him down shy of the first on the 35-yard strike. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. So on fourth down, the Lions turn it over to Matt Prater for the field goal try. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. And this is good. It was running kind of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So a decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, right? Hey, got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. 
And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Well, here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. And the interception last time on the opponent's side of the field, certainly not what they wanted. Put it mildly, that is so frustrating because that signifies there's a drive going on. You're in good spot, great place to run some of your best offense. Instead, they turned the ball over. Yeah, turned the ball over last time. See if they can avoid doing it here. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe it'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Throwing on second and eight. Garoppolo got the connection here to board. And he's brought down after a very nice game. Good work after the catch. Going to net him 23 and a first. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. On first and 10, it's Mostert. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Mostert, the tackle made there by Jared Davis. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Once again, it's Mostert. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. And that will be incomplete. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. Now a first down throw complete downfield. And they get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Give him 28 yards on that one. And it'll result in a fresh set of downs. And that is going to do it for this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. Operating from the gun. Stafford catches made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And will get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Looking to throw again on second down. Stafford. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 37. It's a first down on a gain of 10. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. And that whistles here and a flag down. Someone got going a little early. 
A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Throwing again to Stafford. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. The Lions on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 10. Stafford looks to throw again. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. They'll get a dozen there, and the Lions have a first down. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. Now a first down throw, Stafford. He's got his tight end over the middle, T.J. Hawkinson. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. Yards. 25 yards that time. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. They'll run with Swift, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. Punching it in from a yard away. And the Lions have taken the lead. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight ahead power, and they got it done. He's got it. And this is indeed up to a three-point lead. making its way back out there. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. Garoppolo going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He'll throw from the gun. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Here's Mostert. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Working from the gun, Garoppolo. Hooking up here with Trent Taylor. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. 10 yards on the pickup. 
It's second and inches at the 46-yard line. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Play action, Garoppolo. That's going to be caught by Samuel. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Well, they got the yardage they needed there, picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they have, as well as the understanding where they are on the field? Garoppolo to throw. They'll get this into the hands of Mostert. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Throwing again on second down. Garoppolo, and that is incomplete. Force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out high. They expected it and got there and popped it free. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. <laughs> to throw is Garoppolo. Oh, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. So now it's fourth down and short, and whatever they do, run or pass it, they've got to pick up the first here. Yeah, and you mentioned running it. That is still an option, but as you've also said, they've got to do it quickly and get back to the line of scrimmage. For the field goal, a 45-yard attempt. And this one is right down the middle. And we are all tied here in the final stages. So a big kick to get this back to even. Now the worry is, did you leave too much time on the clock? Because another field goal the other way, that does you in. You're exactly right. You didn't get into overtime yet. So now as a defense, you've got to think to yourself, you can't play prevent defense and just give up big chunks of yardage in front of you, but you also can't let anyone behind you. So you sit right on the line between the two, play the best defense you can, and not make it easy for them to move the ball downfield. as the kicks away. To return, here's Agnew. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Detroit's offense ready to take over. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now, defensively, you've almost got to get down to those starters blocks like you're a sprinter get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier <laughs> said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. Three yards the game there, second down. What do you think? Play this safe? Just worry about getting no team? Yeah, don't make any risky throws. It's going to change the outcome. But if anyone slips, take the big shot. Stafford barking out signals and trying to get his guys set quickly. Play action. Stafford. Throw him deep for Galladay. And that's caught inside the 35. The 49ers now are going to use the first of their timeouts as it comes with a minute four left to go in the game. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. From the gun, here's Swift. And he'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they'll get it with just a shade under a minute to go in the game. The 
Last run got six. Now second and four. Once again, it's Swift. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Now the Niners going to single for their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 55 seconds remaining in the football game. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Stafford going to give it to Swift. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. The pickup goes for 13 and sets him up first and goal. This defense needs a big play in the worst way because so far, they're not putting up much of a fight. If they don't get a stop here soon, this game could be over for them. A game-winning field goal would be a chip shot from here. Let's see how they play it on first and goal. Here's Swift. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And that's a touchdown as they broken our tie here in the final minute of the fourth. Well, any thoughts about overtime have ended at this juncture. That touchdown puts them up six. I would imagine they'll kick the extra point now and rely on their defense. Yeah, rely on their defense. So a little bit of time left on the clock here in the fourth, but they got to feel good now. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. Makes the score Lions 17, 49ers 10. James on the return. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. And San Francisco gets set to go here. Critical condition here, obviously. Got to hope to get something quick right and then maybe take that shot deep. And once they do take the big shot, you've got to worry on defense. Of course, no one getting behind the defense and make it an easy throw. But nowadays, it's not just the ball being tipped in the air and people in the end zone in a cluster. It's that guy that's short in the end zone who comes up and ends up making the play because he goes unguarded. So there's a lot to think about if you're playing defense in this situation. We'll see if they can cover all their bases. Brandon Ayuk, the one he was looking for. But it's going to be second down.
even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Lions as we say so long from Ford Field.